My name is Josh, uh, Josh Lee. I'm from SMU Fund Movement. I'm also from SMU School of Law. I'm proper. I've been dancing for six years. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. Hi, my name is Jerry. Uh, known in school as Geraldine and in the dancing as Jerry Mender. Um, I'm a house dancer as well as a worker. Hey, hi everyone. Here I'm Justin. The style I do most is uh, popping. And, uh, I'm the, actually the logistic kid. Hello, uh, I'm Karen, currently in year 4 SIS. So, uh, my official position in FM is the uh, secretary for the first batch. I would say it was my first lesson in funk. Then like, I, I missed the first prep as batch 3, so I was only there during the second prep. Look at me! <laughs> then like, the second prep was when, I think it's like the first time the members saw Nick and Fong also, because they say the first prep was all about Nick. Dude, fake lah. Like, <laughs> no, no, it, the first prank had a lot of bonding, right? No, but I missed that prank. So I only came when Nick and Fong came. Then, like, they, they were teaching Nick was doing his, you know, the, the rest your head against my arm so that I can pop your head off. Thing. Then I was like, oh, oh damn, that falls. Your, your memory is amazing. No, no, because it's impactful. Because, you see, that's why it's still here. Then I remember Fong coming and the first thing he was saying is like, the first rule in my class is if there's music, you will keep moving, then if you only stop moving, there's no music. I was like, who said Fong? So yeah, Fong. Then I was like, damn. But then, yeah, but then that first class was very memorable. Of course, I like very long one to learn popping and locking already. Then when they finally taught it, I was like, yes, I'm here. Mother. <laughs> You're battling, and then after that, you ask every everyone ask Fong for comments, right? You know, then after you ask Fong for comments, Fong was saying like, "Oh, Alvin, uh, I can see what you're trying to do because I taught you." <laughs> or something like that. Then he was so freaking depressed. He went to buy five bowls of Tao Hui and he finished everything. <laughs> when I'm a senior one, I have no clue like what is done. I have no experience. So during the first like five five battle, I think. Yeah, I did like it's just like go all out, you know, just pace here, pace there, like happy, just do a tour here, like wow, so dope, like oh, not bad. Then everyone just go form like us for beat and itself. And Fong's like, oh, I think he had improved in this. But when I asked for his opinion, he would, he just gave me this look that I picked in my dance and I can't do anything to improve anymore. So what he said was, uh, I know what you're doing because I'm your instructor. So this is like the sort of thing you heard when <laughs> on your like Fucking literally savage. in a funeral someone said this kind of thing right? like you feel the heaviness so after that I'm like moaned by eating like fibro of Tao Hui it's like stress eating you know yeah. it was really very very sad we watched him be so depressed all the way until the Tao Hui then Tau- eat the Tao Hui go home left it it was yeah. amazing uh. I almost tap out another five more but <laughs> I stopped myself <laughs> <laughs> I think let's face it lah, if you're an FM member for long enough, <laughs> you do stupid trainings, uh, stupid things every training uh, so you won't remember. <laughs> but uh, one thing that I remember, like one stupid thing I remember during my time in FM is that uh, during the year when we were organizing the, our first production in FM and like uh, my, my outcome for the production, we were all super nervous on the day of the production itself because it's the first production ever that we organized. 
none of us had ever had experience before. So we all woke up super early. We set alarm, you know, uh, make each other call each other, and then because like Jerry, Karen, and myself, like we stayed really near the Shana Mokyo area. So we called each other, woke up at five thirty, and then I drove to go and fetch them, and then we drove down to school. So on the way there, right, we realized we're all very tired. And my car last time I could hook up my phone to the car, so I could play popping music in the car. So we blasted Legend of Beat Slayer music in the car. <laughs> and uh, when we stopped at the traffic light, <laughs> because there was boom, car, boom. <laughs> so we were all freestyling in the car. <laughs> and then we all stopped, and then we looked at the car next to us, and then the people were staring at us like... <laughs> so that is an epic moment. I will never forget that moment. Were they... Were they judging you or were they... Were they appreciating like... I think they were thinking of two things. <laughs> One is... <laughs> One is... They didn't know what the heck we were doing, so they, they were completely stunned. And then the second was that they were wondering whether we were road hazard. <laughs> so when the road finally turned green, I drove off the car was still there. <laughs> I think Yong uh, yeah, he's the only one who keep winning 3-3 three three, uh. yeah. Ben Chang, Ben Chang <laughs> But I don't think they agree But to me Ben is really, in terms, both in terms of dance and as a person Like, very admirable in both aspects No lah, okay, since Brian and I are from the same batch I mean one of my batches Then I'll comment on the other batch which is uh, batch six, batch snakes. I mean, uh, <laughs> the coolest person from the batch, probably William Halim, because <laughs> mainly because he gets so many girls. Like to me, that's the coolest thing as a guy. Like, how does he get so many girls? I I don't know what's his secret, but yeah, he's the coolest guy from batch snakes. Batch three. Eh? Your old batch, the one that you abandoned. I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you answer that. No, my answer is serious, man. Oh, William Hardy. Uh, anyway, you go batch three. <laughs> batch three. I think everyone from batch three is cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Except for those that quit. Those who quit were not cool. Yeah. That was a knife to the self. What? <laughs> Self kill right there. I think for me the coolest person in batch three, my only batch, is Shall we? Uh, I hope you're watching this uh, bro. Because like when we came in then he had this like bad boy, b-boy gangster vibe, then like it was hard to approach. But then he turned out to be like a straight up chill guy and straight up fella. Taught me a hell lot about life and managing my own emotions and on top of that he's a stand-up bro that it will definitely be there Anna. but of course ever since our exco term i have not seen you come back man come back <laughs> you appear once in a while to advertise for check out my come back but yeah he's definitely the coolest bloke in batch 3 for me no no doubt initially i had some doubts about the club be very honest but after first two years uh, when the third batch came in uh, I started to uh, believe in the club again because of the spirit the, the attitude that most of the members uh, bringing in the club and seeing how it is today but like most member most members are really willing to dance to cipher to express themselves in the dance, regardless of cipher or like battles or anything, they are very willing to express themselves and they're not afraid of making mistakes, they're not afraid of being being like bad or anything. But they just do whatever they like, they, they don't care about what everyone thinks. Which I think is a very big step from how I began in the club. Because <laughs> To be very frank, most of us started out being very shy and we didn't dare to do anything. Yeah, you know like, uh, we like to save face, you know like being Asian, we best get a losing face. So, but, 
seeing the club party this today really makes me feel very happy for where it is today. Yes, year by year, it seems like the junior standard that comes in is like a lot better than from our batch of words. I feel that the standard keep improving, which is yeah. a good thing, and hopefully it doesn't drop from that standard. Yeah. I think having seen um, the club grow constantly from when we started it all the way to now, what I can say as a fact is that I think the sophistication and maturity in dance, in how to succeed in dance, how to train hard, you know, um, how to succeed in life as well. That I think I can say I've seen a really, really huge improvement since when we started our cafe. And honestly, that would not have been possible knowledge wasn't passed down from generation to generation. So every single batch had a part to play in that improvement. Um, but I think to add on, some things have really really stayed the same. You know our values, they stay the same. Respect, humility, discipline. Um, the laughter. Every year when I come back, I see the same amount of laughter, the same um, enjoyment, right? Well, the, the, the fulfillment in dance, the friendships, the memories, and uh, most importantly, um, this stubbornness to succeed against all odds, even though we're just a small club in SNU, that has it. Ten years down the road, I would like to see FM members uh, represent the club in like overseas competition uh, because. I know we shouldn't compare our standard to poly people because poly people have more time to dance but uh, but I believe with our determination we can do uh, whatever we can like because uh, I think I think that attitude decides everything so if you if there's a will there's a way oh is it there's a way there's a will which one's correct but anyway, <laughs> if you want to do something, just set your mind onto it and then eventually you reach your destination. Yeah. I honestly don't know. I don't have a, a vision or whatever. But what I hope for the club to be 20 years from, 20, 10 years from now is that it's for everyone who has already been, in the, been through the club. So the people like us, people like you guys, to still sort of be together. Yeah. To still have a community. And that the club is not just uh, like a school CCA that is a com uh, 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 I don't want to use the word family lah, but for illustrative purposes like a family that lasts generation after generation yeah so that's where I hope to see the club fully agree you all should stick together because mm -hmm. after you go and work then you are basically a company slave uh, till the day you retire and a lot of Unless your you are your own boss entrepreneur Then you are your own slave <laughs> But like honestly speaking the university moments are probably your final carefree-ish moments despite your crushing deadlines, overdue projects and everything assignments that are incomplete crimes you've committed but your uni moments should be very memorable, make good memories and the friends that you make here while in university should last beyond university and that's what makes this SMU FM more than just a university CCA is when you all stick together after the end of it. My vision of what I hope to see FM for the 10th anniversary which means that the juniors who are coming in now will be striving to meet that. Okay? Um, is that FM at that point in time is recognized in our local Singapore dance community as beacons of the best that the Singapore dance community has to offer. That means that every single dancer in FM is an ambassador of the three values, respect, humility, discipline, such that anytime anyone thinks of the word FM or funk movement or SMU FM, they straight away think of our three values 
or even if they don't know our three values, that they know that every single person in SMU FM is not just a good dancer, but a good person as well. They know intrinsically in their heart that they are a good person, someone that they can look up to, someone they, they want to associate with because of positivism inside their dancer, inside every single member. So what does that mean like in practical terms? Um, I, I, I hope by the time we are able to see um, every dancer in FM training even harder than they are now, which is saying something. Okay? I hope that at that point in time, um, the club culture is even stronger, the family spirit is even stronger. At least on the surface, no disputes, everyone is able to work towards a common goal, which is to you know, promote respect, community, discipline in the school, fun culture in the school, and also go out to the external community, to the local dance community, which is our real family, okay? And go there and dance and share and contribute and get back, learn and then share within the club so you have this healthy ecosystem going on. Um, that the alumni members, every single one from batch zero all the way to batch six, they will all still be dancing even though they've left the club and that um, there is a healthy um, sharing, give and take between the alumni and the current members. Um, a healthy alumni group, club at, at the point in time. And uh, also for the excos, um, a healthy and sustainable handover process. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what I really like to see. And I think um, nothing would encapsulate that more when uh, Let's say on the 10th anniversary, one of the days I walk past the Tea Junction and I see a whole bunch of uh, uh, FM dancers training there, not because there's production, or not because there's five divide coming up, but because they want to be there and they want to be better. It's like those kind of like, you know, Koreans like, oh, how do I improve it? Oh, more days, more, more practice, <laughs> more groove. <laughs> What's that record? Yes. <laughs> SMU AA is going to come up soon. Then SMU FM AA hopefully will come up soon. This is 2018.